I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today is April 23rd, 2018. And in this video, I'm going to use Tinkercad to design a box with a lid and actually print it out on my 3D printer. Okay, first, before we go into actually creating something and designing something, I want to go over a little briefly what Tinkercad is for, most, for people who may not know. Uh, Tinkercad is an online tool that's actually owned and run by the same people who, oh, who, have, who, who created Fusion 360, uh, the Autodesk team. And so it's all free, it's all online, and so you have an online tool that you can use to design 3D objects, and then you can download those objects as an STL file and actually uh, put them through some kind of slicer program and generate them and produce them and have them printed out on your 3D printer. So it's a really great tool. Now, it may not be have all the capabilities of Fusion 360, but it definitely has its place, especially for younger kids. Uh, who needs something a little bit more simple, but still you're not stuck with something too basic. So it's all online. You can sign up for it. Uh, like recently, I signed up for my signed my daughter up for it, who's 10 years old. She had to sign under a, under my account because she's under 13. But she, at her age, is liking this way much way better than Fusion 360 because the tools are much simpler. But as I'm going to show you today, you can actually you're not limited to just making little boxes and squares. You can actually do some interesting 3D 3D designs. So. With that, let's get going. Okay, so I'm gonna make a polygon box. Uh, so first of all, when you're doing a design, it's probably good to name it. So it, when it's saved off, you can actually find it a little bit easier next time. So I'll just call this polygon box. So I'll remember next time. And then down here, I can come down here. There's a bunch of little basic tools you can grab. And I'll come down here and grab the polygon. I'll take that and drag it over. And now I've got a polygon. And I'm gonna resize it to, I think, 70 millimeters by 70 millimeters and let's see there's 25 millimeters in an inch roughly so that's about you know three inches big so you can adjust it based on what you want to do now i'm going to change the size from six down to five so now i have a pentagon there we go and oh i got a bevel oh there's a bevel tool i was wondering where that was oh that makes ooh. Mm. okay i'm not going to bevel on this one but uh learning new things right so there's my shape, but now what I want to do is go to the front. I want to see how tall I'm going to make it. Now for me, its current default view is to make it have a vanishing point, which I don't really like when I'm on the side. So I'll click to the orthog ortho orthographic view, and that just means everything is going to be the same measurement, basically. It's a little easier to do it in my head. So I'll come down here and say, okay, how high do I want it? So I'll go, let's go to 30. It'll be 30 millimeters. That's you know a little bit more than an inch, uh, and so that's where we that's what we have. And I'll go here and click home again. And there's my pentagram box. Maybe I'll turn it around. Oh, not that way. There we go. Turn it around that way, just for kids. Mm. Nah, I'll just leave it alone. Okay, so there's my box. Now what I need to do is I can create another box and use it like a cutting tool. So I can come here, click on this box, do Control C and then Control V, and paste a copy of this box. But now I want to make this box a little smaller because it's going to be used to cut out this box. There's a couple of things I want to do. One, I want to click on this little black arrow here, and I can raise this box up. Let me go over here. And if you see on the side there, you can see you can see how far it is off the base. So there's three millimeters, four, five, six. We'll go down to, eh, let's try three. That should work pretty well. And then I'll bring this down in size. Uh, let me click on that. I'll bring this down to match the top of that, so 27. So that one's 30. This one's going to be 27 because it's three higher. Then I want to actually change the dimensions because that was 70 by 70. Let me click this. And I want this to go in a little bit. So if I go in, yeah, let me, yeah, click on there. So rather than that, if we do, oh, it's like a little odd there. Ah, go back. Oh, one of my prints got done. Another box I've been making. Okay, let me move this out of the way and look at the size on this guy. I think I, oh, looks like the size accidentally changed. So I'll type that in again, 70 tab, which actually has, uh, let me go back. So you can click on this right here to resize it. And you can see those numbers change. 
If you want to be more precise, what you can do is you can click on here and type in 70. And then hit the tab button, which will go to the other dimension there and click in 70. And hit enter, and now it's 70 by 70. So I can do the same thing over here, but this one I want to make it a little bit smaller. So we got 70. Let's try to go in 3 millimeters per side, roughly. And so we double that to 6. So 70 minus 6 is 64. So I'll do 64 and 64. Boom. Uh, not perfect, but it should work. So now I'll go down here. Now I want to do is I want to line this up. So I'll come over here and I'll drag this guy over. Also, I can use the arrow keys, which will help me out a little bit. So I can get it kind of close. And let me zoom in a little bit and use the arrow keys back and forth. Okay, now that's centered in the front. Perfect. But now I need to center it on the side. So I'll go over here to the right hand side, click on that again, and let me go in there. Boom. Now it's kind of disappeared because it's in there. That looks right there's about right. So now for the shape, I will change it from a solid to a hole. So now this shape will actually be a hole. So I made it a hole, click on my home view, and now you can see it's a little oddly shaped there. Oh, it doesn't seem to be exactly centered. Let me hit the top button here and let me, there we go. Now that looks centered. So now that's going to cut into it. So now what I can do is I can choose and click and choose both of those objects and I can click on group. Now if I group them, it'll look a little nicer. Boop. If I hit the home button, you can see, look, I got a box. So there you go, there's a box. But now I want to put a lid for make a lid for it too. So I'll sit here and I'll do a control C, which is going to copy the group now, not just the one object, and a control V. And so now I have a second object, but they're the same size. So it's not going to work really well for a lid. So the first thing I will do is I will go to the top here and adjust the size. So I'll do, come on, there we go. so now it's 70 by 70. And so this you might want to tweak a little bit based on your measurements. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit big here to make sure I'm okay. So if I go out, uh, you got to consider that this um, this right here is roughly three millimeters. So I need to go at least twice that on each side. So I need to go 76. So maybe I'll go, hmm, maybe I'll go 78. So I'll go 78 and 78. And hopefully that's big enough for what I need. Now let me go to the front because I'm going to make sure that this lid is smaller because I don't want it to be as, as big. So I'll go down to, let's say, 10. So I'll make that lid like that. And now for fun, now you're basically done. This is how we would leave it and we wouldn't print it out because the nice thing, if you print it out like this, they're both on the surface and it should rise up and print really well. But if you want to kind of do a little double check on your size, what I can do is I can rotate this 180 degrees and raise it up, maybe a little bit over that and kind of hover it over and go to the top and center it a little bit and just kind of get a get a good view for it go to the right hand side and yeah i think i think i got a good overhang there so we'll see how that works so now since i really didn't want it there i wanted it back on the ground i could rotate it and stick it back there or i could just do push the undo button so undo 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 and then undo to flip it back and there we go so now we are ready to go and the nice thing is if you're doing 3d printing you know 3d printing was originally made to help prototyping so if we did this wrong that's okay if we turns out our we made the top lid too big or too small we just come back in here and change it you know it's prototyping it doesn't take that long to print it out just come back in here and remake it um there we go also, for those who may not know, who may be new, I can come up, this, every time I make a change, it's being saved into Tinkercad. So I can go back here to my designs, and as you see, the polygon box was saved one second ago. So I can always come back to it and open up pre prior, design, the prior designs I've done. Cool. So now we're done. So now we just need to export it as an STL file. So I'll come over here and click on export, choose the STL file. 
and there it goes, it downloads. Oops. And I will find that. Let's see. So I have the STL file now in my downloads folder. And the next thing I'll do is I'll come into, uh, I happen to be using a Prusa i3 Mark III printer, which I like a lot. And I'm trying to keep things simple. So for their slicer program, which creates the G code from this STL file, I use the Prusa control, which is uh, simple and does a lot of things for you. So I've already opened it. I just need to take this file, drop it in. And now we can see that we have our box. Uh, and I can place it where I want. And then for me, I'll do, this is not too fancy, so I can do fast two millimeter uh, quality, which means two millimeters, uh, 0.2 millimeters per, per, per row, per level. So that'll be fewer, fewer runs as to go through. 20% uh, infill seems fine. And I'll just go generate the G code for this. And we can see, do a little test here and look at it. Looks just fine to me. So I'm going to save the G code, and I'll put it out in the downloads folder for now. I'll move it later. So Polygon Box PLA Fast, save it. And so now let's take this code and actually go run it. Oh, but before I do, if you have to make some adjustments, this is a nice thing to know. So if it turns out my lid is, let's say it's a, a little too big, and I want to make the tolerance a little bit tighter, I can come back in here and say, oh, you know what? 78 was a little too big. Uh, I want to make it 76, right, as an example. Uh, I don't have to export both of these because if that was the case, your bottom is fine. You just need to make a new lid, not both. So what you can do is after making those changes, you can just select that one object, click export, and it will only export that one object unless I select everything. So if I do that, this will only make an STL file for my lid, which is nice to know if you have changes. But let me go back those changes out and let's go print this and see how well it works. Okay, our box printed. Check this out. So here is my little Pentagon box. And look, my lid fits on there. So I can actually put whatever little jazz I want in there. And my lid fits, you know, it's got a little wiggle, but it's pretty snug. So, hey, it worked out really well. Uh, and before I get into it, I always want to go over the numbers. So, uh, how much did this print totally cost? So. Uh, as, and time and all that stuff. So this print took me uh, two hours and 58 minutes to print out on my Prusa i3 Mark III. It took 2.3 cents worth of electricity, and I'm basing my electricity off 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, and also the weight of it is 0 0.032 kilograms. And so I'm basing the, I use that to base my cost. So at $20 per kilogram for a roll of filament, that comes out to 64 cents worth of filament. So all together, this costs 66 cents to print. So pretty cool. I got myself a little lid. And so if anyone out there happens to use this and make some little cool design, just share it or make a video or send a picture. It's pretty cool. Uh, and for those of you who may be teaching how to do this, I think this is a really good thing to do to, to uh, um, I did this with my kids. We made a simple box last week in a different shape. And so they got up to work and life was good. And now this week, I'm having them come back and make more complex shapes. So it's still a box, but they're adding little features to it. Um, and maybe I'll do a video on that too. But when you're starting out, it's good to get you those really nice little victories that are easy to do, but you actually do something. So don't get too crazy. I would say, hey, it's a great idea just to make a box, uh, a simple box and get it to work. And also don't hesitate to redo things because if you print this out, it turns out your lid doesn't fit or it's too loose or it's too tight. Like mine's not, mine could be a little tighter. I'm, I'm happy with it. But if you want to get a little tighter, hey, this is all about prototyping. Go back and change your design and print another one out. So um, anyway, I call this a real good success. I had a lot of fun printing this. So hopefully someone out there has a lot of fun using Tinkercad and printing cool designs out. Hey, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we are doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.